Campaign season opens with promises and heavy rhetorics as race for government house GRE Benin City heats up. Political actors taxed to employ issue-based campaigns as against campaign of calumny. Also on Political Update today, an in-depth look at the new practice direction issued by the Chief Judge of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory that political cases emanating from states but filed before the FCT High Court should be returned to the states of origin. Is this a game changer or is there any regular room for smart lawyers? I am Fisai Ogunfui. Welcome. Political matters. Now, the All Progressives Congress has issued all governorship aspirants, has assured all governorship aspirants on the party's platform in Ondo State of uh, transparent pre election activities that will aid the party in avoiding litigation. Secretary, caretaker, and extraordinary convention committee of the party, Senator John Akman Udue Dehe gave the assurance while presenting the report of the screening, screening committee at the party's national secretariat. Whatever judgment has been given by the screening committee, you know, giving someone the opportunity of a second chance, we have to do everything possible to make sure we don't have what happened in states like Bayaza and other states that we lost. The, the loss is very painful, we are yet to recover. So, whosoever is agreed should avail themselves or ourselves of this distinguished house. At the second year, you have to fulfill all our judgments. Go and look into this and take an educate it and find the very positive analysis of whatever is done by the previous committee. We do our best. With the September 19th and October 10th gubernatorial elections in Edo and Ondo State getting closer by the day, political parties are tasking each other on the issue, on the issue of issue-based campaigns. This, they say, will give the electorate a clear picture of their policy direction. For the people of Edo and Ondo states, the People's Democratic Party believes that the September 19 and October 10 off-season elections should be a referendum and determined march for the return of the PDP. It urged the Independent National Electoral Commission, as well as security agencies, to note that the party is committed to a peaceful election. For us, the PDP, the Edo election has been made easy going by the records and achievements of our flag bearers. No support is too little. Even if it's uh, one voter or two voters that you can convince to support PDP in Edo State for this upcoming election, please. The coalition of United Political Parties to its contact and mobilization subcommittee has also demanded issue-based campaigns from political parties participating in the forthcoming Edo and Ondo state governorship elections. The committee emphasized that it's time to imbibe politics without bitterness and rancor in the nation's electioneering so as not to overheat the polity, which it described as recovering from the adverse effects of COVID-19. The people of Edo and Ondo states shall both be vigilant and report electoral manipulations, doggery and brigadage to appropriate authorities. The era of rigging, vote buying, over voting, ballot snatching, falsification of results, and brigadage the committee added should be over as the nation strives to sanitize its electoral system. Still on the forthcoming elections, the September, the September 19 governorship election in Edo State is approaching and candidates have started ruling out their manifestos. IAPC's pastor Osage Ize Yamu says his blueprint is simple and relatable. Udwako Bong Achipong reports. The Edo State governorship election is coming at a time when Nigeria is battling the coronavirus pandemic. 
In line with INEC protocols and COVID-19 guidelines, candidates are re-strategizing to reach out to the electorate without physical contact to sell their candidature. Pastor Ize Iyamu is therefore exploring the social media platforms, including Facebook and YouTube, to tell the Edo people what he will offer them if given the mandate. For Ize Iyamu, the privilege of serving the state in various capacities has given him a unique insight into workings of government. His simple agenda is an acronym representing the six cardinal programs he will focus on, namely security and social welfare, infrastructural development and urban renewal, manpower development and training, public-private partnership, leadership by example, as well as employment creation and social development through this roadmap that we have called the simple agenda we are entering into a covenant of hope with the two people that once we are elected things will change for the better the online engagement afforded Nigerians opportunity to phone in and send text messages. For Pastor Osage Ize Iyamu, he intends to continue the online engagement to discuss the simple agenda, sector by sector. Okay, we'll still be coming and going back from the Edo up to the Edo and Ondo elections as reports come in from the different aspiring uh, candidates uh, from that zone. Now, the, to the discourse of the day, the <coughs> Chief Judge of the uh, Federal Capital Territory High Court, Justice Ishak Bello, uh, in the past week has uh, tied the new practice direction issued by the court on entertaining of political cases to the need to address the challenge of various conflicting court judgments which normally arise when politicians file multiple litigations on the same matter. Speaking further on the issue, his lordship warned lawyers against engaging in forum shopping for politicians. The practice direction is just uh, one among the many that I had to put in place in order to curb out certain weaknesses within the justice delivery system. And this uh, one that I just signed is intended to block the holes for conflicting decisions in the same matter and then causing confusion within the polity. To also block the hole for forum shopping, a case from Kaduna coming to FCT, a case from Kwara coming to FCT, a case from Anambara, Ondo, Sokoto, that ordinarily should be heard by the High Court. In those states, they will find their way here. Now, even the Court of Appeal, at many occasions that I had had interaction with justices of the Court of Appeal at various for other seminars or, uh, or symposia, they will complain, ah, my Lord, the CJ, the way your court is entertaining these cases is causing problem for us because for every political zone, there exists Court of Appeal division. And it's causing problem for us. You should please start thinking of discountenancing this practice. Now, I, I always inform them that it's not for me as the chief judge at the point of assigning the cases to throw them back to their respective states. It must be through an exercise of judicial powers. So I will sign to a judge. It's for that judge to say, no, this must go back where it originated. No, but we realize that the time has come now that we have to take a position to block that one, the problem being posed to the Court of Appeal by that practice, and two, the kind of conflicting decisions across the country uh, that ensures a matter will be there and a judge here wouldn't even know that already a decision has taken place there. The lawyers will not even, uh, be uh, uh, liberal enough to exhibit, to exhibit such ruling or judgment and then they will come as if it is fresh and then conflicting decision. Now by that the integrity of the justice delivery system is always being questioned. It's all been eroded and we have to sanitize the, the situation. And uh, what I posit 
there is that all political cases that have causes originating from the state, take for instance, it's a dispute between the ESCO or political party. Re-election matters, all right, originated from there. There are disputes that the state who are caught there we should be able to address. Why don't, why do you have to come all over here? Day, Chief Judge of the Federal Court of the Federal Capital Territory, Justice Ishak Bello there. Now joining me in the studio on political update today is a legal luminary of note. Mr. Kende Akinolu is a senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you for joining us. You, you heard his lordship. Uh, what are your comments at this time, especially f uh, as you also, you know, practice and you have experience in some of these issues where cases continue to, uh, you know, emanate from different parts of the country like mushrooms on the same matter? Thank you so very much. Um, first of all, I must commend His Lordship, the Chief Judge of the FCT, Honorable Justice Ishak Bello, for grabbing the bull by the horn. What His Lordship has done exactly is to reinforce the constitutional provision about the independence of the judiciary of every state. You see, we, with respect, a lot of legal practitioners in this crime practice with a mindset of, mischief maker, of a mischief maker. Why do I say that? The provision of the Electoral Act that says that if you have a dispute about any pre-election matter, you either ventilate that dispute before the Federal High Court or the State High Court or the FCT High Court. That's Section uh, 69.7 of the Electoral Act. That's what people are capitalizing on. But the literal interpretation of that provision of the law does not take away the fact that the issue of territorial jurisdiction that is so fundamental still applies. It still applies. Why should you have a dispute, for instance, in Kaduna, and you bring it to Abuja, for instance, when there are judges, competent judges, in Kaduna who are on ground, who knows the terrain, who are appointed to do it? Now the question may be, oh, maybe the judges on ground may have been compromised, or they may not do their bidding and all that. But that is not the situation. The Supreme Court has warned severally and until, which is what we are seeing now, until heavy damages are awarded against these frivolous actions. We started seeing that. There was one recently where 500,000 Naira was awarded against the frivolous application brought by a litigant in favor of, of each of the respondents. 500,000 until we start having that. So what am I saying in essence? The issue of territorial jurisdiction is so fundamental that nobody, no lawyer, must try and overreach that provision of the law. In terms of pre-election matters, do you think this now will sanitize uh, the electoral space? We won't be getting too much of this, or is there still a room for lawyers? Well, for FCT, I know too well because I practice in this jurisdiction. I know too well that the judges in the FCT are up and doing. The practice direction, which is in exact consonance with the provisions of the Constitution, having been issued, I can tell you without any fear or favor that no judge in FCT will entertain any of these frivolous matters. It should be sent back immediately to where it is coming from or struck out from the list so that um, the man can go to where he should go to. Because the other question is, the Constitution has even made it so easy that, look, if you file a pre-election matter and you are not satisfied with the decision in the right court where it should be tried, you can go on appeal. And the Court of Appeal is duty-bound to pronounce on your grievance within 60 days. So what is the fear of anybody? 
and if you are not satisfied with the pronouncement of the Court of Appeal, you can come to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court will leave every other thing on its docket and attend to you within 60 days. So what is the fear? If you have fear that, oh, the, now, the only one judge that will hear the matter in the first instance may not do it properly, you have the right to go to the Court of Appeal that has three persons, three eminent jurists to listen to you within 60 days. If you are not satisfied, you go to the Apex Court. What else do they want the system to do for them? Oh, all right, let's so uh, I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in full agreement with the position that has been taken in the FCT. I'm right. in full support of uh, it. Before we come to some other judicial matters, let's uh, uh, take uh, some other views. As a fallout of the pronouncement by Justice Ishak Bilo on the new practice direction, our correspondent, uh, Bode Arewa, sought learned opinions on the modalities for its operation. In the last few months, the high courts of the federal capital territory have been inundated by a plethora of cases of a political nature. Most notable at litigations arising from disputes between members of the APC National Working Committee, with the litigants approaching different courts in the federal capital territory to obtain justice. Nigerians would also remember the court case between Dr. Obi Nauzo of the People's Democratic Party and Senator Ifan Uba of the Young Progressive Party over the Anambra South Senatorial District seat. Though the matter originated in Anambra State, the suit was filed before a federal capital territory high court sitting in Abuja. With cases such as this and their impact on the jurisdiction of the courts, the chief judge of the FCT high court, Justice Ishak Belu, believes that returning such cases to the states where the actions originated from is in the best interest of the courts of justice. Dudu Gwain and Modibo Bakari are Abuja-based legal practitioners who share the same view. If cases emanating from other states of the Federation, 36 states, are to be filed in the FCT High Court, it will inundate the court with the cases that ordinarily the court lacks duration. And this makes litigation tedious. The time we think we are to hear and conclude matters will linger. And even when they finish that, end, you discover that the jurisdiction of the court of appeal is getting a light. Because the number of cases had within the jurisdiction of the FCT High Court will invariably affect the duration of the court of appeal, thereby delaying the con uh, conclusion of matters. We emphasized the decongestion of the cases, spreading them to the various jurisdictions of our various uh, divisions of federal high courts. Because some of the federal high courts in the country, we know they are virtually empty. Some of the time you go that they don't even have matters on a daily basis. So they are empty, and while the other parts are congested, you go to Port Harcourt, it's congested. Lagos is the same thing, Abuja is the same thing. Apart from these three divisions, no any other federal high court that is so overcrowded or overcongested with cases, with flood of cases. So therefore I suggest that it's better to decentralize and the jurisdiction is the same thing. Whether your matter is determined by the federal high court in Abuja or is decided in Port Harcourt or anywhere, the same thing is the same position, the same uh, status of the judges, the same everything. So it virtually is it's better to decentralize them, to, to emphasize the decentralizing of the cases to be decided at various jurisdictions where the case originates. It will ease the congestions of Abuja and Lagos because these are the most congested divisions of the Federal High Court that we have. With this direction by the Chief Judge, granting of expert injunctions in political cases will no more be entertained by the FCTI courts. All right, some um, contributions uh, from or, um, some learned opinions there were put together by Bodhari. We still have the Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Kendi uh, Akinolu, right here uh, in the studio. Oh, in your experience, have you seen, because of all these, uh, you know, cases coming back, coming to Abuja from the place of, have you seen some pileups that under normal circumstances, you know, we could have uh, been dispensed with uh, at the state of origination, or the natural, or the state of origin naturally, or, you know, it's just basically some kind of uh, smartness by the, you know, lawyers to make sure that uh, uh, they keep the judges in the dark that something is already happening uh, in those states before quickly bringing them to the, to the center here. Thank you so very much. As I said earlier on, there's a, there's a lot of mischief. We have a lot of mischief makers around. And um, I think one way that we can curb 
this abuse because that is actually an abuse. It's an abuse. If you read uh, Dengiadi against INEC, a decision, uh, 2013 decision of the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court was so hard that a lawyer and a, a, a litigant being supported by his lawyer in forum shopping are jointly guilty. The two of them are guilty of abusing the, the judicial process. I think the way out is for heavy cost to start being awarded, not only on the litigants, but against the council who are involved in this abuse. We've had an instance, we had an instance not too long ago, I won't go into that, where some where people were asked to pay millions of naira for abusing the system. If you know that you are likely going to be asked to pay 10 million, 20 million naira, and if you don't pay, your property, your asset will be, will, 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 will be garnished, will be, will be seized, you will think twice before you abuse the system. Since politicians are not lawyers, a lot of people have said this, even the lawyers who are, who are furnishing them with these tactics to use. Let's uh, uh, move a bit uh, forward before we go on the program. Uh, we, uh, the Supreme Court has declared that uh, virtual court uh, sittings procedure uh, at the APS court is uh, constitutional. Uh, the APS court uh, struck out uh, a, a struck out uh, a file suit by the Lagos. Uh, let's let's take that again. Actually, uh, we understand that uh, the Supreme Court has declared that the virtual court sitting procedure are constitutional. The APS court uh, struck out a suit filed by Lagos and Ekiti State uh, challenging. Uh, the validity and constitutionality of the virtual court sittings, uh, declaring the procedure as uh, speculative uh, in nature without a valid course of action. This has been on, uh, and what would be your position on this, uh, this virtual court sitting because it seems as if it's the new reality? Yes. Well, we want to, well, first of all, I will say that um, the Supreme Court has spoken and that is the law, that is the apex court, and nobody can challenge that position, except maybe in future, if you have another opportunity and a more salient ground to depart from it. But the reality on ground today, which is also applicable in other jurisdictions, go to England, go to America and India, even um, Jurisdictions that you would think are not as developed as our jurisdiction, they started operating electronically. So why must we remain in the Stone Age, especially when the reality, the current reality, which is not likely going to go away very soon. Very soon. So the earlier we face it, the yes. better for us. All right, still coming from the Supreme Court, the court has dismissed him Bay's appeal against uh, Biosa State Governor uh, do ye, do ye. We'll be getting you details in a subsequent bulletin that's been put together by our judicial correspondent, Vera Chimo. But that has been political update for today. Many thanks to our guest today, Mr. Kendi Akinolu, a senior advocate of Nigeria, and to you for watching. Continue with the Nigerian Television Authority, where we give you the very best of news, reviews, previews, and interviews. My name is Fisa Obunfi. Thanking you for staying tuned. All the best. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye now.